Today's binding, we're going to learn the Coptic stitch, which is also known as the link stitch. We're going to start out with five signatures of five um, half letter size sheets of paper each. And we have two covers, which we're going to sew on today. Uh, we're going to start by just folding everything in half. Make sure you have a nice good crease on both of those covers. And then go ahead and fold your signatures in half. And just again, make sure that as you do this, you're forming a nice kind of peak at the, the top, the fore edge of those pages. If you're not, just switch the direction of folding so that your paper behaves a little bit better for you. So we have five half letter size sheets of paper. And all of those folios are folded together into this signature. In total, we have um, five signatures, which means there's 25 sheets of paper in here. So I'm making this video for my students as part of our class. If you don't have enough paper, um, you can use really any kind of paper. Um, I prefer something that's a little bit heavier than photocopy paper but you can also sew this with photocopy paper, or notebook paper, it will all work. Our next step is to punch the sewing stations into our binding. You can go ahead and use your cutting mat to do this marking, or you can get out a ruler. Today we're gonna sew um, two squares from the head of this book and two squares from the tail of this book. And we're gonna sew in the middle of um, the book as well. Now you'll notice I'm not exactly in the middle, I'm slightly off center. You can put this precisely in the middle, it's fine. Um, what I would like to do today um, to show you is just um, to keep this off center so that we don't have any issues of symmetry when we're going to look at um, the orientation of our folios. This is an extra sheet of paper. I've made it as a template. And I'm gonna use it to punch all of the holes with my awl into the folios. So again, it's just a sliding motion. I'm pushing down towards the mat and away from my body. And I'm going to take all of these folios. I'm gonna put an arrow in here so I remind myself to jog up all of the pages to that one side every time. And if they get out of position, <laughs> just put them back in position by jogging them over again. So I'm punching through my whole signature and I'm just gonna slide it to the side of my workbench. We're also going to punch the two boards that are for the covers. Our next step is to arrange our folios and signatures. There's our signatures here and our cover folios here and here. And just to check to make sure that all of the sewing stations are aligned perfectly with each other, that we don't have anything that looks like that. Um, you'll be able to tell if it's out of place um, with this asymmetrical sewing station. So once I'm done that, I'm going to just kind of place this whole spacing away from my body and my workbench, and I'm gonna prepare my thread. We're gonna use white thread today, although when I begin sewing my own book, um, I'm gonna use a different color thread so you can see the contrast while I'm sewing. We have now, <laughs> five, six, seven signatures. So 
We need seven spine lengths of thread plus two little extra tails so we can tie a square knot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a little bit extra here and here to tie the knot. And so I'll go ahead and, and make the snip there. scissors. Then you're going to take the beeswax and you're going to pinch the thread between your finger and the block of wax or chunk of wax, whatever it is. And this is beeswax. I recommend purchasing this at your local farmer's market. Um, it's the place to get the best deal. Plus you get to support your local farmers. And I'm going to make a couple of passes on my thread. And if you get a big chunk like that, don't panic, it's fine. It'll come off in a sec. And if you get any of these weird little knots, usually just twisted. And your beeswax is actually gonna help prevent that while you're sewing, which you will really want, especially with this binding. Yeah, for some reason this thread is very twisted today. Okay. So what the, the beeswax is doing is it's getting the, the twists out, you can see, of your thread. But it's also putting a nice coating of wax on there so that it's going to help your thread stay um, tight. And if your thread has any kind of fuzz on it, it's going to kind of tame some of that fuzz and fluffiness. So I do usually typically about five or six passes of beeswax on my thread. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be using a different kind of thread to sew the actual binding. So I'm gonna to switch to that thread now. And I chose a nice burgundy color today <laughs> so that it would show up nicely on our paper in both colors. This thread conveniently comes in a pre-waxed uh, version. So I don't have to wax this thread. And this thread is gonna be more difficult to put on my needle, although I did not make that look difficult at all. So go ahead and thread your needle. That was way too easy. And then pull it out so you have about a tail about that long on your, coming out after your needle. You don't want to tie any kind of knot in your thread because um, every time you go through that sewing station, it's going to tug and it's just going to be a, a struggle the whole time you're binding. So our next step is we're going to just gently untwist your thread and we're sewing it with a curved needle today which will make sense in a second and we're just going to pass that needle through the body of the thread. We end up with um, this. Okay, so you're going to pull on that short tail then you're going to pull in the long tail and basically you've hitched your needle to your thread without a knot or without any bulk I should say and then I'll give it just a gentle massage right at the point of the eye and where the thread meet. We're now ready to begin sewing. I've cleared my workbench of all of the other kind of interruptions that might get in a way and I have my text block here ready to sew. I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna just put it away from my immediate work area and I'm putting it so that sewing stations are facing away from my body. I am going to then flip over and that's always gonna be my action, this flipping motion. I'm not gonna do anything like this, flopping, twisting, anything like that. Just a flipping motion to get my card down in front of me and I'm gonna begin sewing. I've learned this binding a couple of ways. Today, I'm gonna to show you um, just one of them. And the differences are typically in this beginning portion of the sewing. And the method I'm gonna show you today is, is usually the one that I show in my classroom because I think it's a little bit easier to approach as a student but it's not the only way to accomplish this goal. 
So I've entered my sewing station on the right. I'm inside my, um, my cover signature here, cover folio. And I'm going to skip all the way over to the far left-hand sewing station. I'm going to exit my book again. So just leave this little tail out here and kind of um, just tighten everything. So this is the outside of the book. I'm going in the first hole and coming out the last hole. Now, if I had other sewing stations in here, it would still be the same. I would still enter in this far hole, skip all of the other sewing stations in between and come out this end hole. This is what the inside looks like. So it's just one little big long passage of thread. I am now going to shut this first folio, the cover folio, and I'm gonna take my next folio, my next signature, excuse me, and I'm just gonna you know, flip it over, dive bomb it right onto the top of the cover. So it's just sitting on top here. And our next uh, part of this process is just to go immediately upstairs into this signature. And this can get a little tricky with the curved needle because I'm assuming many people have not sewn with a curved needle before. Just take your time with this. So I'm just going directly upstairs into this new signature here. And then I'm gonna work my way towards this side again. I'm going to exit um, out this hole. And I'm just, if I had other sewing stations in here, I would just work my way from here to here to here to here. However many sewing stations I have, I would just work my way in this direction of sewing. So I'm exiting now this top signature, and this is where I, I re-intervene with the bottom signature. So I'm going to open up the bottom signature, and I've got it over here. And I'm just going to enter the middle hole, the middle sewing station of this bottom signature. If I had other sewing stations, I'm just entering the sewing station immediately below um, where I'm exiting above. With this particular binding, you're never gonna see, you won't see any kind of stitches that run across the spine on between signatures. You're only gonna see stitching up in these columns where the sewing stations are. Okay, so I'm on the inside of this cover folio and I happen to be coming out on this side of the center thread. I think you can see that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to exit the center folio again. But when I exit the center folio, I'm going to make sure, and I'll show you the inside again so you can see. I'm going to make sure that this loop is going around that center stitch, okay? Because if it doesn't, what's gonna happen is the stitch is just gonna go bloop and it's gonna pop back out again. Now is a good time to snug your threads just a little. And I'm going back upstairs into this signature, the newest of the signatures. And I'm just going back into that middle hole. So again, just right back upstairs. And this is what it looks like on the inside, okay? I'm going to exit out this sewing station over here. So you'll notice on this center sewing station and anything, if I had other sewing stations in between here, you would have this nice doubled, uh, doubled pair of stitches, like twin stitches, we'll call them. So your job here at this point is to tighten any of the threads that are in here. So to tighten this center folio, you just pull on the this far side first and then this side, and it should kind of snug up a little bit. You know, you don't wanna tie everything super tight. You wanna find this like happy balance of tension in here. Um, let's see if I can get a little slack out of that line. 
And sometimes it just involves working the stitch in the other direction. So I've tightened up that middle stitch. We are good. And I'm gonna tie a square knot at this intersection. I typically do this in my lap. But I have a separate tutorial video on how to tie this knot. Should that not be enough of an example for you? Uh, my short tail now is pulling down here. And this is the rest of my sewing. Okay. So I'm gonna just tuck this short tail in here so it doesn't cause me any mischief. It likes to cause mischief. Now that we've completed our square knot, we're gonna add an additional signature to our book. And we're gonna begin the sewing of the signature. From here on out, we're going to be using a sewing pattern that repeats itself. So I'm just gonna go immediately upstairs, I hope. <laughs> into the signature and this binding is tightened as you go so i'm inside my signature now i'm going to exit the next sewing station so there's the stitch on the inside i'm coming out on the outside and this is when your curved needle comes in very uh, handy. This is very annoying to do with a straight needle. So what I'm gonna do here with my needle is I'm just going between these two signatures and I'm using my needle to hook around um, the pair of stitches that's just below here. And this is the beginning of our link stitch that's gonna travel up this center sewing station. I'm not puncturing anything. I'm just using the, the hook and curve of the needle to help um, easily access and steer my needle around those two threads. Now it's important because we're going in this direction of sewing that you enter on this side and exit over here. And you'll see that that switches depending on the direction of sewing. Right now our direction of sewing is from here to here. So we're moving from this side to this side. Once you do that little loop around there, which is basically your link stitch forming itself, you're going to re-enter that center sewing station. Tighten as you go, just a reminder. And now we're going to exit our sewing station. This is what's on the inside of my signature. This is what's on the outside. Now, if we had other sewing stations in here, we would just be doing that same linking on those other sewing stations. It's only at the ends that we do something different. It's similar though. Um, again, we're working our way, our direction of sewing is from here to here. So we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna hook it behind that thread that's there. And this time, instead of going back into this hole, because we'd have nowhere else to, to sew. Uh, we're gonna do a little stitch called a kettle stitch. So I've left, you can see a little loop at that junction here. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through that loop in the new direction of sewing. So our direction of sewing previously was this way and that's how I went behind those stitches. And now in our new direction of sewing, I'm gonna go that way. And I'm going to very slowly <laughs> um, pull this thread towards the ceiling. And I usually put my finger on here so it doesn't cause any tension to the paper and the signature. Okay, that's the end of that row and we can add a new signature. We'll go upstairs again. And then we'll work our way over in the new direction of sewing. In our case, we're exiting just the center hole. This is the interior. This is the exterior. 
and we're gonna link again. So this time, because our direction of sewing is from here to here, our link is just taking our needle and crossing behind this new, the newest link stitch that's on here um, in that direction of sewing from here to here. And there's no knot at this portion. This is just, um, we're passing behind. And I also want to mention that we're not passing um, in this signature. We're passing just behind this newest link stitch. So um, in here. Okay. So we're beginning to see this link forming. It gets quite pretty. We're just going to enter this middle sewing station again, just like before. And we're going to continue on our way. Tighten as you go. We're going to exit this final sewing station now. And now at the sewing station, we're going to kettle, do our kettle stitch again. So again, our direction of sewing is from here to here. That's how we're moving across this row. I'm going to take my needle just between these two signatures and do just that little looping action, leaving that little ear of thread. And then I'm going to now change my direction of sewing by sewing through here in the new direction of sewing. So now from here to here. To tighten, I'm going to pull towards the ceiling and just gently tighten that thread. New signature. You'll notice that this is very much repetitive. And finally, I am at the last signature, which is the cover folio. Uh, it is sewn exactly the same as the other signatures, with one exception at the very end. As I mentioned, when I began the sewing, there are many, many variations on this binding. Many. <laughs> um, this one is the one that I typically use as a link stitch because it's, it gets the job done and it's, in my opinion, the least complicated of the variations. So you keep sewing just as if you're gonna add another signature, but instead of adding the last signature or an additional signature, I should say, you come back into this last little maneuver that you did and you do an extra kettle stitch. And you do that kettle stitch as if you didn't do, almost like you give yourself amnesia and you it's almost like you didn't do the first one. So you're doing it a second time. And just tug that towards the ceiling. Typically what I do is I can either bury these threads or I can leave them exposed on the outside. We have an odd number of signatures. Let's unbury that little tail. Which means that we have a tail 
coming out over here and a tail coming out over here. Now, if that drives you crazy, which it may, um, you can always change uh, your design, which is sewing with an even number of interior signatures, and then your tails will end up at the same side. Or you can uh, choose to go with the odd number and you can just bury your tails in the interior of your book in some capacity. It just involves re-threading this one, for example, and passing it into that sewing station again. And you would do the same thing over here while your needle is still attached. You have a few options also to kind of fan out the edge of this thread. Your fingernail does a good job. Your knife, your bone folder, your all, all help um, fan that out. You can use your needle as well. And this does absolutely nothing except look cute. Okay. So it's a nice little fan shape. You have a few other options to finish this book. Um, if you don't like this open flap for the cover, you can um, use adhesive to glue this shut. You can also pack this if you don't like the kind of flimsy quality to it. You can cut a sheet of paper that fits in here and create um, a sandwich, a laminated sandwich of papers for this binding. That's also acceptable. 